Hey everyone, it's Greg with Spotted Tongue Woodworking and in this video I'm going to show you how I built a custom mudroom or hall tree or whatever you want to call it for our kitchen. It's been a while since I've created a build video and you know there's a good reason for that. One of them is I am incredibly busy. Another one is that we now have three children and three kids. A lot of busyness means it is hard to find time not only to record but to also record audio. Right now the kids won't go to sleep and I'm running back and forth trying to keep them in their beds. So along with raising kids and trying to run a small business, I also have projects to take care of around the house. And this is a small project that really completed our kitchen and dining room. You know, started with sheet goods, you know, as all cabinet projects do. Cut, break down the sheet goods into my box sizes using a series of dominoes and pocket screws to hold everything together and then we're off to milling rough lumber to finished lumber for all my face frames and door parts. Part of what I've done early this year is try to invest in a few pieces of equipment that really change how I do things and improve my efficiency. One of them was that Craig pocket hole machine. Uh, it's not the best but it's better than what I had. I've done things a lot quicker and here I am trying to find the glue or my screw gun to be able to put these face frames together. That's one of the problems I still deal with is organization. I am not very organized and it does slow down how I do things in the shop. I would love to hear your suggestions for how I can increase my organization and also increase my efficiency. Um, until then I'm going to keep walking around and looking for things and hoping I can remember where I put them. To some extent, I feel like I'm in a weird position between the traditional face frame style cabinets and then your new more European style frameless cabinets where I kind of bounce back between each as I see fit for each different project that I take on. This is a face frame project uh, because it will have openings that I want to try to show that are square. So the face frames were there, the face frames for the doors, just to also help me be able to set it and scribe pieces to place. After trying to fiddle around with router tables and router bits for making my doors, I finally settled on just making my door shaker panel doors on the table saw using a dado stack and cutting out my rails and styles that way. I found I was able to get really good accuracy very consistently and then for my shaker panels I actually found that I enjoyed back cutting half inch material so you get the flat panel look but then also you get a thicker more robust door that has increased weight and just feels like a more quality project than your standard quarter inch or five millimeter center panel. A nice little trick for uh, improving the quality of the paint job, you know, it starts way back before you assemble the doors, is I actually take a 1 16th round over bit and round over the inside edge of all of my shaker panels, what that, or all my rails and styles for the shaker doors. What that's going to do is that is going to help prevent paint bridging or building up between the rails and styles and the panels when I paint and it allows it to be easier to dig that out and keep a nice little shadow line all the way around allowing the door panel to move into float but then also having a very clean line again all the way around. I've got a very simple method for building, putting my doors together is I set them in a pair of parallel clamps, check the diagonals or the, the diagonals if you speak English, the diagonals to be the same size and once everything is squared up clamp it all in place and then I'm actually just going to hit it with 5 8 brad nails to hold it together and what that does is that allows me to have almost a production level of output where in the clamps nail it and it's out of the clamps. So far I haven't had any doors fail. I feel that I see a lot of other larger cabinet shops doing that procedure so I feel confident in that. And now just to ensure that all my doors and rails and styles, make sure everything is flat and consistent thickness all the way through, I just run everything through the jump sander. And what that does is it flattens the doors, it gets rid of the highs and the low spots, and ensures that the doors are going to be consistent all the way across. After flattening everything, I'm going to square everything up. I do have a cool little um, reverse 
outfit, uh, not an outfit table, an infeed table, which allows me to square up the larger panels that way. And then after everything is squared up, back to the door, 1 16th router bit, round over on all the edges just to ease those edges um, to help the paint, you know, a rounded edge, an eased edge holds paint better than a sharp corner. That'll increase the durability. It feels better. It feels more professional. You need to finish sanding and then door hinges, concealed hinges. So use the Craig Jig 35 millimeter concealed cup hinges for your bloom soft close hinges. Um, fairly standard procedure and we're going to be off to the races very soon. Of course, I did mention that this is a face frame cabinet project. So with all my face frames, what I like to do is I like to hit them all again with that 1 16th round over bit and finish off a little bit of sandpaper before assembling the cabinet boxes to the face frames. And what I found is the quickest and easiest way for me to do this is you have my face frames, have the face frames, and then to have pocket screws, pocket screws on all the sides to attach the face frame to the box. and what uh, the reason I do that is the face frames are on there but if I need to adjust anything I can take them off put them back on and it's a very nice very good system that I'm happy with of course the problem with having pocket screws all the way around on every side of my cabinet boxes means I got to cover up those pocket screws somehow and what I found what I've really tried to focus on not focus on doing but little ways to really improve the quality and the appearance of my projects are little things like these fake raised panels. I you know, shamelessly stole this idea from Mike Farrington, uh, how he does his wainscoting, wainscoting on uh, walls with quarter inch MDF. And so I thought, hey, maybe I can do this with cabinets. So what we do, you start with uh, 3 16th hardboard because the hardboard Actually, it paints very well. It's super smooth, very durable, paints well, rounds over, cuts, screws, routes, whatever, you name it, it works well. Cut out uh, the frame, so cut out the center panel with a track saw, cut out the edges with the little trim saw, and put that on a flat panel on the back. And what you're going to end up with after you glue it and clamp it together, what you're going to end up with is a raised panel. Oh, not a race panel, a shaker style panel that looks like it was made up as a five piece door or made up as a solid HDF from a CNC. Very clean, will paint well, and it will hide those exposed ends and cover up those pocket screws. So, with this build, you know, not only are there going to be cabinets, um, this is a locker room, mud room, hull tree style build with a shoe bench and an upright cabinet so you know there is a bench top and we're going with white oak for that bench top i'm a big fan of white oak i love the smell of it i love the look of it i love the feel of it i love how it looks with an oil finish with that golden color i love how it looks with a natural finish white oak i believe is you know in my opinion the best wood to work with it is pricey it, it does cost a lot um, super durable super hard and it is definitely worth the little extra money it costs. And it's a super simple glue up, joint the board, plane the board, rip them to width, glue them up, and after they're glued up, I'm gonna run them through the drum sander, to get rid of those glue lines, and square it up, and that's it. Not a whole lot. So let's go ahead, we'll pop these raised panels out of the calls, the clamps that I've had them in. A Little bit of glue that I'll need to cut out of the corners with them but I'm very happy with how these came out and how they look a um, little bit of paint on them and they are going to be phenomenal take a little bit of chisel clear out that glue I used uh, the 15 minute uh, the quick and thick type bond so that's why the glue is white um, didn't quite want to have to wait with the wood glue and so now we have the panels we have my cabinets what we're going to do is this is actually a very interesting component because part of the build is I'm going to have recessed inset lighting in the underside of the upper cabinet. And so to do that, I'm going to have to make a false panel for underneath that cabinet and using a custom circle cutter, I'm going to cut out room for those puck lights. And then we're going to add just a little bit of blocking, a little bit of backing 
to offset that panel just enough to run the wiring for the lights. With all of my projects, I really do like to try new things. Uh, these, those puck lights are the new thing that I really want to try with this project. Um, that was the bench top. Run it through the drum sander. Going to square it up on the table saw so I have one side ripped or cross cut, rip, cross cut, rip, cross cut, rip, all the way around, kind of the five cut style method, and around over the edges. Add a chamfer to the bottom um, just to have just a little more edge detail and we're going to sand it with to we're sand it to 120 grit and after sanding it to 120 grit you know the beautiful white oak I'm going to apply polyurethane and you know a lot of people don't like how the polyurethane looks it gives it that really yellow color I like how that looks on white oak I think it's very traditional and it holds up and matches a lot of different colors. Well, and speaking of colors, we're going to be going with, um, I believe the color is Anchors Away. If I recall correctly, well, I know it's the same color as the color we used for the lower cabinets in the kitchen when I built the kitchen. I just don't quite remember the color off the top of my head. I believe it is Anchors Away. Anchors Away is a deep navy, and I had just had a leftover can of paint that I wanted to use up so the paint had been sitting for a little bit, but I mixed it up and it seemed to be okay. Go ahead. This is actually one of the last projects that I'm going to spray with my HVLP gun. My compressor quit not too long after finishing this project up. I switched over to an airless sprayer. And if I had had to, had, had to have had used the airless sprayer with this project, I would have had to buy a different paint. Um, the HVLP, it is a slower spraying process but it is radically more efficient than the airless sprayer. The airless sprayer uses about twice the amount of paint that you would expect to use with an HVLP gun. Have these large cabinets and this large upright cabinet, you know, the shelf pins with the, again, Craig, a lot of Craig jigs with this. And here's the part that I thought was really cool. I was actually practicing for another possible job. And this is going to be making up my own crown molding. And one of the things with the crown molding is there are there is no crown molding in the entire house. I have thought about running crown molding in the house, but I wanted something that's very clean, very modern, and what I wanted to do was that flat crown. I couldn't find any flat crown, so I had to make my own. I just bought some of the stock MDF MDF from Lowe's, cut my 32 and my 58 degree corners or my 38 and 52. Again, I don't remember off the top of my head. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to layer that crown on a flat, on, again, on flat stock to build up, make up that custom built up crown look. After mocking, building up my crowns, going to again pre paint everything. I have everything cut, everything's pre painted, and I'll just have to cut the ends when I go to install things on site. And then you can see the puck lights fit phenomenally well in these re this recessed panel. Going to just set those in there and it's all going to be in place so that all I have to do is run the wires through the side of the cabinet, pop the panel in, screw it down from the top, and we're going to be ready for install. I'm going to apologize in advance for the poor uh, camera work uh, trying to film in this small corner of my kitchen. Um, you can see where we start with the separate toe kick ladder piece. Um, we're going to level that and leveling that will just allow me to set the cabinets in place without having to worry as much as to leveling each individual cabinet they can just sit on there and go into place so we set the large cabinet in place first um, you can see that there is an outlet back there I have to cut the outlet out of the back and that is the outlet to which I will actually be plugging the recessed lighting into um, instead of hardwiring it oh I woke up a kid whoops all right and you know before everyone gets upset that I woke up the baby you know, he's the third kid. You can wake him up. Nobody cares. Okay, that, that was wrong. I didn't mean to say that. He was going to wake up from his nap anyway. It was right about that time. I just happened to be working. So, back to handing him off to mom. Back to where we're working. If you didn't catch that, I used dominoes to help align the face frames between the upper cabinet and that side cabinet. Have the dominoes set slide the cabinet over. Face frames are going to automatically line up. Don't have to worry about that. I can clamp it and then... 
measure over for all my studs. And so I can hit the studs with the screws, make sure it is nice and secure. And a very similar process with the lower cabinet, just kind of set it in place. It's going to line up by default with the dominoes, get it set up, and then we'll set the top in place. We'll screw the top to the cabinet and we'll move on to applying all the end panels and the bottom panels, all the trim pieces and the doors, and we will, you know, make it look nice. And with the cabinets in place, we can start putting the panels in there. First, we'll start with this recessed lighting panel. So it has the three puck lights cut into, into recessed into the panel. The wiring goes through the side of the cabinet down to the outlet in the back and with the lights on. There is my little Joey girl, my little princess, the middle child. Yeah. I am wrapped around her finger and I love her to death. She loves it. She enjoys the cabinet. I probably could have left it like that and she'd think it was great, but you know, it is not done. So with the lighting panel in place, we're going to put the side panels on there to cover up those pocket screws and to come, you know, finish up the fit to the floor and to the wall. Again, those were, you know, glued panels, glued pieces of uh, hardboard together. So the hardboard is HDF. And it looks like a raised panel. It looks like uh, one of the doors you know, on the side of the cabinet. It is a finished end. And I am really excited to be incorporating something like this into my pieces and into my work. And to have just that extra element of finish in everything I do. Is it a perfect system yet? No, not yet. But the more I practice it and the more I do it, the better it's going to be. You know, there are a few things that I got a little wrong with this that, you know, if it was for a paying customer, I would have redone it, would have fixed it. But again, with a project for my house, it is what it is. You know, tell that to my wife. She doesn't quite agree. But, you know, for the long and short, this looks good. I'm really happy with how it's all coming out. Again, we put doors on to cover the shoes just because we don't like looking at the shoes. Um, not that our shoes are ugly, but... You know, the doors just, you know, hide the mess, give it that really complete look to it. So we'll put the doors on there, the European, you know, the Bloom soft close hinges with an inch and a quarter overlay for very, very tight reveals. You know, again, I think the hallmark of good cabinetry is tighter and tighter and tighter reveals. And, you know, th this video at home, this project at home would not be complete without a little extra help from all of the kids. So we had Lionel at first, and then Joey second, and now Emerson is going to help me film. And we were actually having a little bit of a sick day with Emerson today. It's why he is going to, you know, you'll see it. He's still in his pajamas, but, you know, him being sick, he is still eager to jump in there, help us out, help me out. And, you know, I'm always, not that I'm ever nervous with him holding my drills. I just never know what he's going to put a hole into because, again, he's a three and a half year old boy. Then after that little extra help with getting that door on, we're going to start putting the trim pieces on. So there is my pre-finished crown molding you know i had pre-cut it and you know i had to trim the ends to fit the the exact dimensions of the upper cabinets together again with that uh, a little bit of tight bond or that was star bond a little bit of super glue to get, bring that miter tight together finish quick and you know just set the crown right on there and just pin it real quick in place almost like a little hat and we're going to have a nice reveal across, you know, even with the door, bring that reveal all the way around the side of the cabinet. And then just for a little added element, I'm going to add a oak light rail, light trim, um, just to tie it in with the seat bench. I feel one of the trends that I'm seeing more and more with cabinetry is mixing painted elements with wooden elements, not just, you know, wooden tops, painted bottoms, but having wooden elements in the cabinetry itself. So that was, you know, just trying it out, see how I look, how I, you know, feel about it. And I think I like it. 
So all the trim pieces are on, toe kicks are on, everything's on. We're going to drill for handles, hardware, and there it is. The mudroom, locker room, kitchen corner super organizer that we're going to use for backpacks and shoes and dog food and leashes and winter clothes and who knows what else we can stick in there. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear me ramble, watch me work. And if you got something of value from this channel, if you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you again.